Hey guys, Wave618 here. It's the 18th of July 2019, just gone 8 pm in the UK. I'm going to do an update video today on Bitcoin, essentially looking at the progression of this bull trend. Uh, we've been waiting patiently for this correction to play out. I'm going to explain why I feel this is the completion of a correction pattern playing out as a WXY. We'll be going into detail on the indicators suggesting that completion. And um, yeah, that's essentially what we'll be covering. If interested, then stay tuned. All right, guys, so exciting times in the world of crypto and Bitcoin. Um, before we jump straight into discussing the chart, just want to mention the Discord has been growing tremendously. Really good input from all the active members, everyone sharing the same strategy, pitchforks, Elliott Wave, uh, order blocks being shown to try and identify the best setups across the markets. It's been really, really uh, useful and uh, a great place for people to really learn the way I trade because it includes all the... Um, material that I use that I've learned throughout my trading career to yeah to learn to allow you to trade independently so yeah just want to say with this video I'll be putting a link in the description as well as on Twitter and it's going to be a discount link for a 25 sorry 50 percent discount on the first month of cryptology that's essentially um so it's going to be 25 pound for the first month thereafter a normal rate of 50 pound a month idea behind it is just to allow people to get an idea and feel for what the the product actually entails because i think it's an excellent product had really good feedback and um the only thing that's holding people back is not knowing what they're signing up to so i thought this is a great way to try and uh, alleviate that all right do listen to the end of this video i'm going to put out another offer at the end which i'll reveal um yet yeah, once i've finished analyzing this chart so let's uh jump straight into it so bitcoin as i say this has been our first impulse up from the bottom here off the 3.2k then we've corrected uh, so these are our first two waves as you know i like to use pitchforks using the first two waves using this original pitchfork which generally holds price in an impulsive uh, when it's impulsive essentially you can see here it has really held price very nicely now i want to add on one further line which is very very key and will actually also explain why we bounced at the point that we have done in the uh, yesterday so the point that i want to add on is the 0 0.5 and you can see here this is a really significant line so first of all we test it here uh, we test it here uh, we test it here twice here so we can see price really rebounding and respecting this level very nicely and on top of that it's respecting it really really nicely here where it came down to it came down to 9000 i think 9050 roughly um, now i did explain in previous videos as well as the fact that obviously we've got this pitchfork support here the other thing I mentioned in previous videos is just going back to when Bitcoin really trended upwards very fiercely um, <clears throat> not too long ago. What happened is we get these consolidative blocks of price here. And then when once we break out above, price generally comes down and tests the high, the range, the high of the range of these blocks. So if you look, for example, if we just plot horizontal line here. Marking out the top of this range, look where price comes down to. It goes up, breaks out of the range, then retests. Okay, and we see this. It's often a recurring theme. So again, if we mark out the top where price comes up to, marks out the top of this range, and you can see price again testing this level. You can even plot it here, where you could argue this is the top of the range where we get more tests of it. And again, price tests this really, really nicely when it it breaks out comes down uh, and it's essentially what we've seen in Bitcoin I'll explain in a moment I'll show you clearly how we've seen like a three wave count coming down testing the range and then it pumps and look how it really propagates upwards following that again mark out the top of your range so this was our 
um, bullish orders collected during this uh, window here. This is the top of the range price. When it breaks out above, it comes down, tests it. Okay. Now this range here was very fierce. Price went very high and came nowhere near, obviously testing this. So the next bit of consolidation, obviously this bit here, again, three wave count down, breakout upwards. We come down, where do we come down to the top of the range? So we see this recurring theme, okay? So just wanna show you here, it pretty much happens to the T that we see this again. So let's really zoom in here. So this was our order block here. This is our range, consolidation, sideways, price action, accumulation, Wyckoff accumulation, whatever you wanna call it, that led to this resultant impulse to the upside and then price retraces. Where does it retrace to? Pretty much to the T, it comes down to this high here. This horizontal line I've drawn out using magnet mode off this high. And you can see we hit it, bang on, and then we start moving upwards. There was confluence with this 0 0.5 line of the uptrending pitchfork. And I'm gonna show you in a moment some other key pitchforks that helped us look on the short time frames, look at this uh, price action, um, this WXY play out. So in fact, let's have a look at that now. So let's uh, zoom in. Hourly time frame is probably best to look at this. So as I say, I've been discussing in depth how I've been looking for this WXY play out. Up until the point that price came down below here, there was always the possibility for a triangle Though I was always skeptical about that because looking at the volume profile, typically with a triangle, you get very nice declining volume coming down. What we saw here was a volume spike here. And this made me very, very skeptical about the triangle. Really, this volume should be considerably lower than this volume for a nice triangle play out. So for me, that gave an inclination that rather than a triangle, we were going to come down lower. And that's why... I was always looking at the WXY as being the most probable play out. Um, people also argued, was it going to be an ABC? Typically with an ABC, the B wave, so let's just say A, B, C. A lot of people were looking at it this way. This is never a count that I entertained. And the reason being is the B wave for me did not come high enough. I think it came to around just over 80% of this wave down, okay? Obviously, this was a clear three wave count down. Once you get your first three waves in, there's several ways it can play out. It can be a WXY, which is the way I've labeled it. It can be a flat pattern, so you can have a three, three, five. Um, <clears throat> if it's gonna be a flat, think of the flats it can be. So it's clearly not a running flat. B wave does not go higher than the preceding impulse, so it's not uh, a running flat. Um, it's also not an expanded flat. Again, B wave doesn't go higher than the preceding impulse. And um, so the question is, is it a regular flat? Now, if it is a regular flat, it's a B wave failure because the B wave does not come as high as the preceding impulse. So typically the rule is, as per Mastering Elliott Wave by Glenn Neely, with a B wave failure, B wave should generally reverses at around 81%. Yeah, and I think it did... I think it kind of went over that, suggesting that it wasn't quite in the realms of a B wave failure. So for me, rather than looking for failure patterns, I'd rather label it as a more regular pattern. I'm ha I was much happier calling it a WXY. So where X wave, yes, they can be shallow, sometimes a 0.236 retracement, sometimes a 0.382, but also they can retrace as high as the preceding impulse and even higher. You can get a running WXY. If you want a reference to that, check out Mastering Elliott Wave, Glenn Neely, figure 8.9. He'll refer to it as a running double three, which is essentially a running WXY. Okay, now, so yes, yeah, certainly you can have X wave coming up very high like this. Okay, before I start getting questions about, can you call it an X wave if it's gone so high? The answer is yes. Um, so then we had our three wave count down. Now it wasn't that clear. First of all, I was looking at this as three waves down to here. Yeah. 
I know a lot of people will be looking at this looking like it's five waves, like a one, two, three, four, five. Obviously not impulsive, but looking like a five wave count. You could argue it's a WXYXZ, which is made up of five corrective waves. Um, but I was much happier calling it a, uh, just a WXY with this being WX and then Y down to here. And the pitchfork, there is a pitchfork I've been using for that. So just pulling out our pitchforks now. So yeah, this was the pitchfork that I used to look at this move down. So this was our, I was happy with this being our, the W, this being the X, allowed us to draw the shift pitchfork. And you can see price was adhering really nicely to these lines. So following our third pivot, which is here, we come down, hit the median line up to the upper median line, down all the way to our lower median line, bounced to the upper median line, all the way down, and then finding a bit of support around the lower median line where are we now we're testing the upper warning line once it breaks this this is a clear shift in momentum to the upside okay um so that pitchfork is one thing i wanted to demonstrate let's just get rid of that now there is an, another key pitchfork i want to mention so that's this one now this is the one that really helped me confirm the completion of the wxy so Three ways down to make your W, X wave up to here, allows you to draw your pitchfork. I generally like to use a, pit, a shift pitchfork when it's corrected price action because price will adhere to that much better. And so what happens, we come down very nicely, median line. Yeah, then we bounce, go down, retest of median line. Where do we come down to? The lower median line, yeah? This is what helped me confirm the bottom. Obviously the volume at this point wasn't too high, Whilst if you look at Ethereum, I'm not going to pull up the Ethereum chart. That's kind of beyond the scope of this video. But if you look at the bottom on Ethereum, it did have that high volume. Okay. So from here, um, yeah, we see our bounce. Again, there's a few things that I was looking at. So first of all, we tested this previous consolidation here very nicely. Red line is that uh, line uh, offered support here. So we've got the lower median line offering support W X Y with a Fibonacci relationship between Y and W of a 1.382. So if that's W extend it from the end of X Y wave. All right, excuse me. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship and it's absolutely square on one-to-one. -one. Okay. So again, perfect, very nice Fibonacci relationship between W and Y wave. Um, so far, so we've bounced off the 0 0.5 of the large pitchfork here and where have we come up to? We've come up to the, the median line. So obviously a little bit of resistance we're going to be finding here. Uh, as well as that, I showed you on the previous pitchfork for this move down, we we're at the upper warning line of that. So clearly two points of resistance at that level, but we're seeing really nice volume coming in here with price moving up. Okay. So lots of reasons to suggest this was the end of this correction and I'm looking now for these highs to get taken out and I'm, I'm expecting price to push much higher. Obviously we'll be happy to look, we'll have to look at the shorter time frames for the, looking at the price action, looking at the wave counts for the next move up to determine where it's going to pull back. Obviously this upper warning line is what I'm going to be looking at as the next bit of resistance. Now this can take us certainly almost up to $20,000 in terms of the time frame it's likely to come up and hit this. Yeah, so we could, we're, there's a good chance from here we test all time highs of around $20,000. That's what I'm looking at. Obviously, invalidation of all of this is if price comes down below 9000 Okay, that is the invalidation point. But for me, at this point, there's a lot of reason to suggest that this is the end of our WXY. It's the end of the correction and we're going to start moving up higher from here. So one other point I want to mention, and it's another indicator that I'm very, very fond of. Uh, you don't see many people talking about it, but I think it's a really underrated tool. So let's clean up the chart and let's put on Camarilla pivots. So these are your Camarilla pivots and I want to show you on the daily time frame. I want to show you so basically with the Camarilla pivots essentially for each time period when you're on the daily the range is one month okay 
and the R3, R4, S3, S4 are generally the lines that you look to offer either support or resistance. S stands for support, R stands for resistance, okay? And basically these levels are automated, they're put on by the indicator itself based on the highs and lows of the previous range. So it looks at the range of this data here to determine the, the levels for this range here. Okay, that's how it works, and you'll find that these levels often work very well. So you can see here we got knocked back at the R3. Where do we come down to? All the way down to the S3. That's where, again, another supporting indicator for a turnaround in price at this level. Here again, R S3 taken out really nicely. When you get R4 or S4 taken out, yeah, so basically we leave the range, you can expect price to then uh, propagate upwards and then use that level as support if in the case of the R4. Here obviously we did have support temporarily bounce and then we've come down further once the range terminated. Okay again here breakout where do we come down to we retest the range you can see this indicator is used. Yeah time and time again we see these levels well respected. I want to show you on the weekly time frame what I'm looking for. So this is so on the weekly, we got rejected here at 11,400 uh, in terms of any weekly close. Yeah, I'm looking for now a weekly close above the R4. When that happens, we can price, expect price to stay above the R4. Obviously, I, I would expect some kind of a retest. The retest of the R4 on the weekly Camarilla pivots will be a wonderful place to, to get in. Yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. But obviously, first of all, I want to see a closing weekly candle above this R4. Uh, that will really show a lot of strength in this market. Um, <clears throat> you can see here, again, Camarillas, S4, acted as... You can see we overshot it slightly, yeah? A little bit of an overshoot, hence why I never use Camarilla indicators uh, as, an, as, a, as a signal, a buy or sell signal by itself. I'm always going to use my Elliott Wave pitch forks, order blocks, but all, this Camarilla Pivot is an excellent tool to add to your arsenal of indicators. That's how I use it as a supportive indicator. So you can see here, S4, very nice. We, we kind of shot below it, then we, we're testing it. Uh, we leave the range, slightly it'll move down below a bit further. And since then, because there's a lot of other things, as I mentioned in many previous videos, there was very nice completion of a uh, W, X, Y move down to here. So there was, there was an Elliott wave completion, uh, there was pitchfork support, um, and then we had obviously the Camarilla support also. So yeah, just wanted to throw that in there for an extra bit of like education. It's a tool that I'm very fond of. We talk about it in the Discord a lot. Um, yeah, so I did say at the end of this video, I will mention uh, that, uh, that I'm going to put out another offer. So basically the offer is um, put a comment in the YouTube video. Everyone who puts a comment within the next, let's say, 24 hours uh, will enter a prize draw. Winner of the prize draw gets the first month for the uh, cryptology completely free. So you're basically going to be able to sample the the the, the, um, <clears throat> the product for, for free for the first month. Yeah, so if, you are, if you're interested in that, just leave a comment, you'll enter the prize draw. So if you've managed to watch until the end of the video, which I'm sure not everybody has done, you're certainly in for a good chance of winning that one. All right, guys, if you've liked today's content, if you find that useful, then leave a like. Um, that always kind of urges me to make more videos for you guys. And um, yeah, really hope that one helps. So uh, all right, guys, gonna wrap it up. Take care. <laughs>